My pleasure to speak to Bill 110 today, Speaker. And as I said in the House yesterday, with regards to Government Bill 75, good public policy requires three foundational principles oversight, recourse, and accountability. As legislators, we don't have oversight over all aspects of the administration of government. The work of many administrative bodies are exempt. The Children's Aid Society is one of those. And history has taught us that the need for oversight is imperative and that the Ombudsman is one means to achieve that end. I'd like to read a little bit from the Ontario Royal Commission inquiry into civil rights in discussing the origin of the Ombudsman, which developed in Sweden over 300 years ago. It states, as royal power declined and representative democracy developed, Parliament felt the need of an official with duties similar to those of the Ombudsman to scrutinize the actions of administrative officials on behalf of and to report to the legislative body. The Swedes recognized that each official engaged in the administration of the affairs of government is largely answerable only to the law or their interpretation of it and to their own conscience rather than to a higher official. This can be problematic. Injustices deserve correction. And this is difficult when, to quote later from the report, there are wide areas of government into which the elected member of the legislature has no power to inquire. We refer to the administrative councils of local governments and municipal bodies, such as boards and commissions. We can further extrapolate to include bodies such as the Children's Aid Society, which do not allow oversight from elected officials. I would not for a moment suggest that the Ombudsman is a complete answer to the problems of the administrative of, administration of justice. He's just one tool, quite a good one, I think, but just one, and mankind needs many tools in this technical, technological age. Those are quotes from the Royal Commission from, in Ontario. Speaker, an ombudsman is not the be-all and end-all solution to the problems with the children's aid societies but it does provide greater oversight and accountability. The existing act does provide a little bit, but as a legislator, I'd like to share my experience uh, in one or two cases. And I would refer the members in this house to look at the Child and Family Services Act, um, section 103. A child in care has a right to speak in private and receive visits from a member of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario or of the Parliament of Canada. I don't know how many members have actually tried to exercise that right. I have. And I have been stonewalled by some children's aid societies who have actually gone out and prevented me from exercising my right or that child in care. There are people that I've seen tragedies, such as Andrew Skinner and his wife Lindsay, who went through the turmoil of a Children's Aid Society case, I believe unfairly and unjustly, and they had no remedy. And our public policy can never, never be justified if it doesn't provide remedies to the tragedies it creates. Andrew and Lindsay spent over $300,000 trying to find a remedy. They are still deeply in debt and there still is no recourse. I encourage all members of this House to support this bill. Thank you.